Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. We have just had a huge earthquake, a magnitude 7.5 hit Drake Passage today, August 21st. This is 2025. Yes, it is 2025, believe it or not. We've had a bunch of big earthquakes this year, multiple magnitude sevens. In fact, we had a magnitude 7.4 right in this location, just slightly to the north on May 2nd of this year. Of course, we had that magnitude 8.8 .8 mega quake. We've had a lot of earthquakes. And well, we also today, just hours before this, less than 24 hours before this huge earthquake, had a massive explosion on the far side of the sun. Clearly one of the biggest explosions or solar flares and solar storm launches of, 20, of solar cycle uh, 25 yet. So tremendous explosion, very similar to what happened on March 29th, 2025. If you remember, we had a huge 1.1 X-class flare on the sun and we also had that magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake in Burma that shook, you know, Burma and Thailand and a whole bunch of stuff. So we're seeing similar resonance between this earthquake and solar explosion sequence as we saw back then, really clearly highlighting the connection between the sun and the earth, which goes back billions of years. And we're also seeing interesting connections between what's happening at a larger scale if we include Comet 3i Atlas. We actually don't even really know what it is still. It's just an interstellar object of some sort. And Oumuamua, which was the first interstellar object ever observed. So that's, uh, that's 1i Oumuamua. So the first interstellar, that was back in 2017 in the fall. And now 3i Atlas is the third interstellar object picked up by the Atlas Observatory um, and that, that network of uh, um, telescopes. And, well, when Oumuamua swung through the inner solar system really briefly and rapidly in September of 2017, we not only had some massive explosions on the sun, some huge solar flares, double digit X flares on the sun. We also had a magnitude 8.2 earthquake that struck Mexico. The timing is impeccable on all of this. So now we have 3i Atlas zooming in and we have these coronal holes that have been loading the earth with energy for nearly a year now. And we have all this earthquake activity. So things are really looking dynamic for the next few months. And then as many of you know, as many of you know we have some historic planetary resonances clicking into effect in February next year with the conjunction of Saturn and Neptune, a 35 to 37 year cycle. But this one in particular is very, very special because of the constellation that also exists with Pluto and Uranus, both 60 degree trine from them. So you have a mini grand trine or a minor grand trine as it's called. So really incredible energies right now. And then 3i Atlas coming in from interstellar space. So uh, here is the epicenter of this magnitude 7.5. This occurred actually on the 22nd of August if we go by universal time. So is that zero, well, just basically 2.16 a.m. universal time at a depth of 10.8 kilometers. They did put out a tsunami alert for this right after it occurred, but it really didn't, um, it didn't really materialize. So that already has basically been taken away. And um, the USGS actually has this as one of the, the stronger magnitudes. So the other agencies have it as like a, um, like 7.3, 2, 7.4, 7.6, one of them. So they're all in that zone, but uh, it's, it's a 7.5 right in that middle magnitude seven range. So we've actually been forecasting for a magnitude seven earthquake to occur for uh, a little bit over the past week or so. I was just about a few days off with my earthquake watch. This is the biggest earthquake that we've had since that earthquake watch. So if we go to our eight day view really quick, Let's go to our eight days and we'll go to our largest. And actually, ju it just slipped out. Um, yeah, it was on the 14th. 
we had a 6.3 Solomon Islands. I believe it's the 14th. So that just slipped out of our range now. Uh, and then we've only had, as you can see, magnitude five earthquakes for a week, and then boom, 7.5. So a big release of Earth energy. The entire globe is shaking from an earthquake of that significance and magnitude. And one of the questions I have is, is this coming like, what's causing this increased earthquake activity? Uh, there are, you could say it's technically all normal, but it's the space weather factors that are leading me to believe that we've had a bunch of energy pumped into the Earth. And so is this deep Earth energy releasing itself increasingly? And what's that kind of lead to? Does that lead to some really big volcanic eruption, for example? Well, that's possible. Um, we will kind of have to wait and see. But I think that we're very much looking at some really dynamic Earth events this fall due to the combination of all these factors. And check this out. This is crazy. So this is on the far side, so this is not hitting us. But look at the velocity on that, nice full halo, a little weaker in this direction. So it did blast more off to this side, as you can tell. So it wasn't from something that just rotated off the limb. This is a, a spot that's gonna be rotating into view soon. And so this is gonna hit Mars with that energy. There's been a lot of planetary resonances and alignments connecting with Mars over the past month or so, and there's going to continue to be because 3i Atlas does a close approach to Mars on October 1st. And even the edge of this will hit 3i Atlas. So before this occurred, there were two big, uh, there's one big plasma filament and a big prominence at launch. There's also a solar flare and chromal mass ejection at launch about 24 hours before that double sequence. All that is launching out towards Mars and 3i Atlas. And now we have this also following up, though the majority of it will miss 3i Atlas, some of it will hit it. So we have this interstellar object, which is surrounded by this complex dusty plasma. And as a result, it's interacting with the electromagnetic circuit of the solar system. And the closer it gets, and it's nicely aligned with the ecliptic plane, then, well, the more we're going to see this sort of dynamic activity from the, from the sun because we see that time and time again. So we see this connection between intense solar activity and these interstellar objects. So this is what we had today. We don't know the size of that solar flare, though clearly it was quite large. The velocity on this is estimated to be about 1,600 kilometers per second or something, so very, very fast. It did not get to 2,000, but very, very fast. Our SkyLive, our 3D solar system viewer, due to 3i Atlas, um, we see it coming in right here. Retrograde, 175 degree inclination, meaning it's only five degrees off from that ecliptic plane. And it's set for today, the 21st of August. We also see the orbit of Oumuamua here, okay? So we are going to go forward to the end of September, beginning of October right here. We see our first significant alignment there with the Sun, Mercury, Mars, 3i Atlas. All of them in a very close alignment, just like that. Even if you go forward one more day, it's right around this zone there. That's a significant planetary geometry. So that looks quite significant. And this is about the, I mean, it does get closer in, as you can see, perihelion, I need to relock to a uh, 3i Alice. Perihelion is around the end of October. I think it's the 29th right here. So it's getting within the orbit of Mars, but it's not getting within the orbit of Mercury, for example, which is what Oumuamua did. But it's staying in line with the ecliptic plane of the solar system and therefore interacting with that solar wind current sheet for a long duration. Whereas Oumuamua flew in and was out very, very fast. But it cut through that current sheet in the electromagnetic system of the inner solar system, very close to the sun. And because Oumuamua is, you know, quite large, it interacted with that electromagnetically, disrupted these electrical circuits for a brief time period before flying out, okay? So that was back in September of 2017. 
But here we have our solar activity from September 4th to the 11th of 2017. You'll see two big double digit X class flares during this time frame. And what you need to keep in mind is that the perihelion, the closest approach of, three I, of Oumuamua in 2017 was September 9th. So we had two double digit X class flares right around the perihelion of Oumuamua. So it swung in really close within the orbit of Mercury. It was also in, on this side right here. So it was on that western limb when we started getting all this activity that got rotated closer and closer and closer to Oumuamua. And then, as you'll see here, our largest earthquake for 2017 was this magnitude 8.2 Mexico and that was on the 8th of September, so right before the perihelion. So Mumu is right in there, super close to the sun. We get the 8.2. We had a double digit X class flare before that. We had a double digit X class flare just a couple days afterwards. It tells you that there's this very strong energetic connection between these interstellar objects if they interact with the sun because of their complex dusty plasma cloud. And therefore, the sun can do these big explosions. And when we see these biggest of solar explosions, we usually see these big earthquakes here on Earth as a result. And so that is effectively what has happened today. That is what I'm reporting on for you. I think as 3i Atlas continues to swing into the inner solar system, again, it's all the way out here right now. This is the 21st of August. We see it getting closer and closer. It's not going to get as close as a Muamua but it will get quite close. And so I expect this fall to be very dynamic. And these coronal holes have been loading a tremendous amount of energy into the sun. And this is the coronal hole that just hit us with a high speed stream of solar wind, causing there to be a spike in the solar wind velocity and a decrease in the density. Well, that was the same coronal hole that had hit us and then we had that magnitude 8.8 .8 megaquake just a couple days later. So we've had two big earthquakes with both of the successive hits of that high speed stream. We had this guy back on about the 26th, 27th of July, hit us with its high speed stream. And then on the 29th of July, we had the magnitude 8.8 .8 megaquake. And then just a couple days ago, this high speed stream hit us and well, now we've had this magnitude 7.5 in the Drake's Passage. And so we've been loaded with this energy from the coronal holes for months now. That energy goes pretty deep into the Earth. And now 3i Atlas is moving in, interacting with the sun. And it just seems that in general, when there's a big explosion of activity on the sun, that just seems to resonate with the Earth. Perhaps there's even some sort of like gravity shock wave that can trigger earthquakes. And so we see this connection between the solar activity, the earthquakes, and interstellar objects all combined together. That's what we probably have coming up for us this fall. We're already seeing it right now. And we have uh, all of October for 3i Alice to be really close to us. And then September is a big month. November is also going to be a big month as it gets closer in September and it moves further away in November. Uh, but August, we're pretty far out and we're already seeing these effects. So I think there's a lot of energy that's been pumped into the Earth now because of these coronal holes that is going to be releasing in 3i Atlas, maybe that electromagnetic dusty plasma cloud disruptor that kind of triggers it off. Because keep in mind, when we saw this with the Muamua, it was late 2017. That was the very end of Solar Cycle 24 which was a weak solar cycle. And there was a huge spike in activity at the end of that. Solar cycle 25 has been much stronger than 24. So the potential for this to scale up is much higher. That's your report for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, I've been your host, Stefan Burns. If you like this channel, you like to stay up to date with what is happening with the Earth energetically, then please smash that like button, subscribe. I will keep you up to date every step of the way from a holistic perspective. I am very open-minded. I take everything in, do my best to understand it, find out what the truth is, present that to you almost daily. So we're on the road to 500K. Jump in before we blast past that. We are to the, going to the moon, basically. So uh, thank you all so much for your support. Wishing each and every single one of you well. Please take care of yourselves. I'll see you all in the next video.